Hello, welcome to episode three of the Perfect Strangers podcast. Uh, we're still in our perspective segment. Um, and again, I told you guys we're going to have uh, unbelievable guests. I told you guys that's going to be a great learning experience. And I've done it again. I've, I've, I've found a, a super, super special person, um, a role model for me, a Santa Clarita legend, a California legend. Uh, Trent Irwin uh, is in the house today. He, he's a uh, uh, giving me the honor to get to talk to him. Uh, I had the blessing of going to high school with Trent. We went to Hart High School. He was a senior uh, when I was a junior. Um, one of the greatest high school uh, California wide receivers of all time, Stanford graduate. He's currently a Cincinnati Bengal. Um, and everyone's going to know him for, kind of from afar for how great of, of an athlete he is and what he's been able to do on the field and, and, and even that in the classroom. Um, but the one thing I do want to say uh, from my perspective, is just getting to know Trent uh, in, in high school and understanding the, the teammate that he was. Uh, I've said this to so many people by far, and I'm not just saying this because because Trent's in front of me right now, the best teammate I've ever had. And, and I and I, I mean, my teammates right there, they're today my employees, my best friends. We grew up playing travel football or travel baseball and uh, football since I was seven years old. And surely I built like brotherhoods with, with some of my teammates and family, friends and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, still, not just because of his talent, uh, way, way, uh, way more than his talent. Uh, Trent Irwin was was definitely the my my overall best team I've ever, I've ever had. And I actually want to say a story, Trent, before I, I, I ask you a question on. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll never forget this. I, I doubt you even remember this, but uh, it was my junior year. And Trent, again, he's all see all everything. Right. He's going to Stanford, already, already committed. And it was after a practice early on, and this was in summer camp and I'm walking back to the locker room and, you know, no one really like talked to Trent. He was just like in his own lane, right? He was just, he was focused. Not that he was ever mean to anyone, but he was just like on another level. Right. And I remember I saw him walking uh, after one of the practices back to the locker room after we did the field work. And I, I look over and like, he's got two bags on his shoulders and he was carrying in the ball bags. And I like, this literally sounds like a cliche, like made up story, but Trent was carrying in both the, uh, the, the ball bags, like, like whatever, like, like, like Andrew Nielsen's like kicking bags. Right. And Trent was carrying them in. And, and of course it's supposed to be like the youngest person or, you know, the scout team guys carrying those in. And I remember like, I walked, I was like running over to him, like grab the, the bags off of his shoulders. And he was like, no, it's okay. And uh, someone else, like one of the coaches, like was taking them off his shoulders as well, but I'll, I'll never forget that moment, man. And I remember like, I, I still use it today. I give it even in business, just about like teamwork. And I think growing up playing sports, right. We, the, one of the first things you learn as like a youth football player, youth baseball player was like, Hey, uh, you know, teamwork. Right. And, and yeah. you're only, you're only as good as your, as, as your worst link. Right. That, that whole kind of totally. saying. And I think it, it, it's, it's utilized a lot in youth sports and the whole concept of you tackle someone and you help them back up and just kind of yeah. like that, that's kind of what youth sports is there uh, meant to do. But as we get older, right, as we get higher level, and of course, I can only speak on, on high school sports, but uh, particularly in high school, when you're dealing with that demographic of kids, you kind of lose that, right? If you're, yeah. if, you're the, if you're the best player on your freshman football team, you're probably not really talking or eating lunch with the scout team kids, right? Like, like it's literally kind of that dynamic. Um, but just getting to, to be around you and watching how unbelievable of a person you are and how good of a teammate you were uh, just made me like way more of a fan. Like I would root for you anyway, because you went to my high school, man. But because of the way that you acted and the way that you carried yourself and how much of a role model you were for me and everyone else on the team. And seriously, like, I'm not just saying this because you're on my podcast right now and you've blessed me with the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, I've said this to my aunts, my uncles and friends and a bunch of other people that uh, have asked me just questions about you. Cause you know, we had the famous Brady white and Trent Irwin connection uh, you know, for, for a few years there in high school. And uh, I've always said that, that about you. And uh, I just, uh, it's it truly like, like kind of shaped me and, and it's helped me even in business. And like, you're the a true epitome of, of, a, of what a leader should be. Uh, so I thank you for that. And I thank you for kind of setting that uh, and being a role model for me while I was in high school. And I know even for me, my senior year, I was never even near as good as you were, but just being a, a leader, maybe on the defensive side of the ball for, for my team, my senior, year, I definitely tried to carry on some of the characteristics that you kind of instilled in us. So, uh, that, that, that's enough of me talking, Trent. I do want to hear you just kind of explain who you are, how you represent yourself. I know you're even an actor, dude. I know when you were a kid, you even did some acting. So give us your, I know you don't have to do this much because you're a big baller, you're a professional, a Cincinnati Bengal, but give us your little elevator business pitch. Who, who's Trent Irwin? Who is Trent Irwin? Yeah. yeah, I really appreciate all that you said there, man. It means the time. It's very touching. Um, and I, I miss those days, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, 
Um, who is Trent Irwin, though? Yeah. I would say Trent Irwin is uh, a kid, a child at heart, just trying to live life, have some fun. You know, I, I think that people stress maturing too much. And I think that there's always some sort of child that you can keep alive inside in the way that you go about your life. Um, and just for me as an individual, you know, I've, I've been blessed to honestly play a game for a job. You know, and there's not many people who can say that they continue to play a sport that they would play on the weekends for a job. So I'm super blessed with that and all the people that I've met along the way. And I think that, you know, I don't I don't know life without football and I don't really want to get to know it too soon. Right. But when right. time comes, you know, I think I'll, it'll be a, a very, um, you know, I have a lot of friends, a lot of connections, a lot of whatever that I can, you know, yeah. talk to when things are in different situations. Yeah. yeah. Where's the football jersey? I have to ask. So Trent Irwin, he was famous not only for his skill and being a good teammate and good in the classroom, but he wore a football jersey every day in high school, walk around campus. So I, I assume you just walk around in your uh, Bengals jersey now? Man, it's uh, weird. Like, I, yeah, okay, I had like an A.J. Green jersey, but right, now right. I put them last right. year. I was actually wearing an A.J. Green right, jersey. Right, right. Yeah, so it, it's funny. a different dynamic. I can't wear right. a jersey of someone that I would either play with or compete right. against. That's funny, so man. I've lost a little bit of my football yeah. jersey. Right. You know? right. That's funny. But, That's fine. Yeah. Well, I know you're busy. We're going to start getting to these 15 questions here. But again, before we start, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I truly uh, view you as a perfect stranger, right? Again, you were a teammate, but to me, you're always kind of like this icon that was like you were in your zone, right? Like you were in your lane in high school, uh, never disrespectful to anybody, never standoff to anybody. But I, I, I saw with you one of the first times, like, was an individual like so focused about like their goals that nothing was going to stop you from getting that. So uh, I kind of deem you as a perfect stranger. We, we shared a locker room for, for about a season and a half because I got to be a part of that little playoff run when, when uh, you guys won CIF there. But uh, I would still deem you as a perfect stranger. So I'm super, super excited to get to know your answers on these questions. Love it. Great. After. Okay. First question, what motivates you? What motivates me? Yeah. I would say... I don't know. I think I, I cherish the, the details in an activity, in a sport that aren't often seen until you really get into the sport for many hours. You know, I, I cherish those little details that you have to fine tune and change as the thing goes on and the competition of it in general. I mean, I, I love competition. If you can put me in a way, in a position that you're competing in everyday life, I don't, I don't think there's any better way to grow than that. So I, I would say the competition and the fine details that you can't really see mm -hmm. if you're not immersed in the sport. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. Yeah. I mean, a true competitor. I remember something I, I'm actually remiss of saying in the beginning there was I remember watching or uh, it was my junior year and you were a senior and I remember you were playing defense for us. And again, that was something like you totally didn't have to do, right? You were already committed. You already had, you know, Stanford going on and and you really, you, you get, right, a lot of guys that are senior year in high school, some, some guys don't even play, right? They, they kind of are just taking it easy out there. I remember you playing defense for us on top of that. I think you tore your labrum uh, and just kind of playing through all those injuries just kind of, you know, was, was able to make me realize a true competitor again. So, again, something I appreciated about you. Uh, question number two, uh, how did you start your career? How did I start my career? Yep. My dad loved football, honestly. So he was big on that. I started when I was five playing flag football mm -hmm. and um, actually took a year off. Not many people know that. I took my, when I was six, I took that off to play soccer. And then I played football from then on out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just started it there. And then, you know, Bill, you never know what's going to happen, but you just keep striving for trying to get better every day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's been a hell of a journey. Me and my dad always talk about that because, I mean, that's one of the things that motivates me too, is it's sort of our little journey, the, yeah. the process of building and growing. And, um, you know, I talk to him every day, like he's, like he's my girlfriend or something. Right, I'm on the right, phone right. like an hour every day, talking yeah. about, both, talking about life. Yeah. So, um, but that's where I started was when I was five playing flag yeah. football. So when you had your first, when you had your first catch last year, was your dad at that game? But that was not at that game. Not, yeah. they, were it, they were definitely watching it, but yeah. he was not at that game. But, but yeah. I was, I was 
Oh, we were in, yeah, Houston there. Uh, number three, what challenges have you faced or what's one experience that has made you who you are today? What challenges have I faced? I would say injuries are the biggest one, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I tore my MCL coming out of college. And so really? for me, yeah, I had a knee brace at Miami. And so for me, that was my biggest, one of my most, like, biggest growth periods was mm -hmm being able to because like when you have a knee brace you can't move as well you don't yeah. move how you want to move mm -hmm. and you sort of you try to make up for it with other things whether yeah. it be extra moves whether it yeah. be whatever it may be you try yeah. to make up for it because you don't feel like you are enough at that sure. point yeah. so that was the point of which i was like oh and the nfl you know we had guys like xavier howard who was yeah. a pro bowl defensive back and it was you know trying to figure out ways to win um, with that little, you know, inhibiting factor. But mm -hmm. I think the big thing I learned from that was just sort of to live it day to day, you know, mm -hmm. not, not to worry about something that's three weeks off because there are so many variables that are not under your control in that sense. So you're just day to day, hour to hour, and, um, you know, just, just taking it piece by piece and, and yeah. loving every bit of it because even the, even the bad is a, is a, me a lesson that you can take a ton from, so. Right, right. How much, because, you know, that's a great point you bring up, right? For for us, you know, non-athletes, right? We, we love to judge, right? Fantasy football, all that kind of good stuff, right? We, we, we love to say, how is this guy not playing? How much yeah. does an injury affect you mentally, sometimes even more than physically, like when you are able to, to get back out there on the field? Totally. I, I think the game is 90% between the ears and 10% athletic. Like it's, you need to be athletic. You need to be physically, you know, sound to play in that position. But when you're out there on the field, there are so many mental aspects that allow you to get open, that allow you to create separation, make plays. And I think that's where you get the best of the best. You know, like A.J. Green, his confidence in himself when I first came here was unbelievable. Like, it it was funny to even, like, just play him in ping pong because yeah. his confidence, he yeah. wasn't a great ping pong player. Right. I would say that, but he beat the crap right, out of him. Right, right because you could just feel his belief system in himself. Yeah. So I, I don't know the way he goes about everything that he does. Yeah. It's just exuding confidence. And yeah. it was just a, it was a cool experience yeah. there. Well, one question I've always wanted, this is kind of a, a side I'm, I'm going yeah. off line lane a little yeah. bit, but so yeah. for, for you, right. I mean, high school, it just, there was an element you were just better than everybody, right. Just, just skill wise passing tournaments, right. You're untouchable. Right. So when, when you got to Stanford, when you've gotten to the NFL, and now yeah. you have guys that are running right there with you. What, what, what separates you to, to be able to continue to go? Right. Because I remember Shane Vereen, we, we were close family friends to them. And when he got yeah. to Berkeley, he was saying, well, you know, like we had a bunch of five stars that didn't even make the team, right? Like they, 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 they didn't even play their first season because once guys were athletically as good as them, that they weren't even able to, to, to make it at, from, from a mental standpoint. Right. Yeah. So, it, was there a moment for you at Stanford or in the NFL that kind of shifted your mindset that was like, okay, like these guys are right here with me now for the first time in my life, talent wise. And like, this is the moment for me. It, it definitely grew in the sense of work ethic too. You know, you see in high yeah. school, you know, high school, I think is the most pure football you get. It's you know, you're just out there with your boys, yeah. loving life, yeah. playing ball. Yeah. Then you get to college and it's more serious. There's lifting, yeah. there's extra work, you know, the people who are working hard, you know, that, and I think that at that point you start to see guys who are, you know, they're, they're, there's some dogs out there they're <laughs> for that position. You're like, yeah. dang. Right, you gotta, <laughs> yeah. But like, you gotta, it's, I always think baseball is the ultimate sense in that thing, because like, if I win 50% of my reps, mm -hmm. the thing is like, I could be in an advantageous position. The ball can be put there perfect coverage, perfect catch or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, perfect ball, perfect catch yeah. beats perfect coverage every play. Yeah. So like, it's about the communication with the quarterback, I think is the biggest thing and being on the same page. And so finding that trust and that communication mm -hmm. is what creates that next level edge. Because at this level, they, DBs are like mind readers. Like they yeah. can just read your body and yeah. tendencies and everything there. And, and when it comes to like athleticism is not as important, but it's, it's the tendencies, it's the body language yeah. and, I think that's where the art comes into the game. You know, it's a craft of it. But I think as you get older, you have to get more artistic with it as sure. it grows. Cause it's, it's just, uh, everyone studies film. I mean, they watch so much film that they know 
if I stick stick, I'm running a post or whatever. They know what you're going to yeah. do. You know, we ran a similar play every game at heart, but like right. that would, you know, <laughs> send Trent on a nine, you'll be fine. Yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, they always find ways to stop things and you got to keep growing and adding on to that. Sure, yeah. Uh, what do you value most? What do I value most? That's got to be my family. You know, I, I think in the end of the day, that's, that's my, you know, stable day. And that's the people who are there for me and everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that's who I call in any sort of issue. That's who mm-hmm. I, you know, that's my support system. Yeah. That's my everything there. You know, I got three younger siblings mm-hmm. and, um, you know, just trying to support them, help them mm-hmm. out in whatever way. You know, I, I have the privilege to have been through a lot of what maybe they will go through in the, mm-hmm. in the coming years, them playing sports and them playing sports in college a little bit too. So, um, you know, just trying to be that guiding hand to uh, lead them in hopefully the right direction for them because yeah. everyone's got their own individual direction that they, you know, yeah. is best for them. So question on that too, right? So you, I mean, I would deem you as a superstar, right? Stanford graduate, NFL player, a certain level of expectation maybe right for your siblings so how do your yeah. parents or, or yourself try to try to balance that out a little bit that's a fantastic question um i don't know if i have the answer i feel like yeah. my siblings might have the better answer yeah. <laughs> but i feel like i just don't try to bring any of that up that's just you know that's what i've done yeah and um in the end of the day you know they got their own journey journey their own yeah. expectations yeah. and um I just tried not to have any, I wish like part of me is hurt with it. Cause it's like, I don't want them to have to try to live up to anything right, because I want right. to be dumb. Right. You know, but I try to instill that thought process in general because it's, you know, everyone's got an expectation or a, you know, they see someone and they think better of them if they're in different situations. But if you live in your own life, doing your own thing and you have your morals and values that you live by, no one else's expectations of you should have much influence because it's, it's who you are. You molded that and you've created that. And that's what you do. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like trying to instill that thought process rather than the expectations of anything. Cause expectations, I don't know. Someone always said comparison is a thief of joy. So when you have to yeah. compare to something else is it's just a tough place. Comparisons, a thief of joy. I'm taking that one away already from the podcast. Love Thank it. you. Uh, question five. What is the best piece of advice you have been given and the worst? Best piece of advice I've been given. You know, I heard this from a buddy um, and it stuck with me. Let's see if I can get it verbatim. But they said that no one should believe in you more than you believe in yourself, you know, and what you have, whatever you do. And, I, and that stuck with me because it's so easy to get out there and go and be, you know, you make a mistake. Then you're like, dang, you know, maybe I, I won't catch the next one. Or dang, I won't, you know, a condition it's raining, whatever variable it is. But there's a coach that just said, you know, no one should believe in you more than you believe in yourself because that in- inherently has got to be you. You're out there with yourself every day. You know, you go through the battles, you go everything. Even if it's a coach trying to support you or a parent trying to support you, that's your own battles. So, yeah you got to have a belief system in your own and your own abilities and whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think it starts there and that's huge for me. I love that. And the worst advice, worst advice. Oh, we, um, worst advice. See, I try to let those things go. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That's what I said too. So I answered the questions on the first one. Yeah. Thank you. But, uh, not apply to me. Um, but I, I would just say, I would say that I like, I don't love some of the tone sometimes that people bring into a situation. Mm-hmm. Now the, the non-constructive criticism yep. just sort of eeks at your confidence, eeks at your abilities or your, your self value. I, yeah. I would say some of those would be the worst advice. I, I don't remember any of what yeah, they yeah. said. That's good. good. Yeah. For memory, it ain't, it ain't healthy for me and it ain't right. true. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It is. <clears throat> Next question. What has been your most exciting project or role? Right. Again, it's a little bit different for you, but I would just say, you know, was it, I mean, you know, you were, uh, uh, did all those passing turns, right. When you were in high school and uh, you know, was there a, a certain game that you were a part of the, you were a part of the uh, military all American game, right? Like, was there a yeah. certain experience for you that was, was your favorite out of all the cool things that you've been able to do? My favorite, man. Um, I mean, on paper, I think the Rose Bowl sounds like one of the coolest yeah. and it was, 
it was a very unique experience. And I mean, my family been growing up watching the Rose Bowl yeah. for years. That I have a Rose Bowl ring is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but for me in general, I, I go back to high school being the purest. You know, I, I think those passing league experiences yeah. were unbelievable. You know, yeah. you were just out there, and I was out there with my boy Brady, just, yeah. just living it up, slinging I mean, it around, and we beat just, teams that had no business beating. Cheat code. And, St. John, Bo- I'll never forget my junior year, St. John Bosco. I mean, because in a in an eleven on eleven game, right? Just for their offensive line, they would have just oh, tore yeah. us up, right? But we get out there on a passing tournament, and just you and Brady, just the entire game, it was uh, well, that was we amazing. Had, we had a scrappy group, the yeah. whole. Group. Oh yeah, Blake Fall. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The system, we didn't think anyone could stop us. Right, or beat right. us. Oh, yeah. we were making plays that. Maybe we had no business making, but yeah. we made plays and ended yeah. up winning that game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those were just fun times because yeah. we were just a crappy little group out there. Yeah. How's, your, how's your relationship today with Brady? <laughs> Brady's my dog, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, I'm a groomsman for him. He's getting married. Yeah, I saw that. That's awesome. So, yeah, um, yeah no, I, I love Brady. He's actually with the same agent, too. So we chit chat right. and we yeah. go golf all the time. And yeah. that happens, dude. Yeah, that's, that's good, dude. man. Yeah. Uh, next question. What is the best experience you've had in your, in your current role? So as a Cincinnati Bengal, what's yeah. been your best experience? My best experience as a Cincinnati Bengal. Um, hmm. I mean, I'd say what they do in practice sometimes is fun is they, they have a, just a one-on-one rep where everyone on the whole team is watching and they do it like yeah. once a week with certain people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're just out there and like, it's mono a mono yeah. with coaches, everyone's attention. And like sometimes the guys will bet money on it. Yeah. So like one time we had this was more like in the seven on seven period, but one of our guys bet like a thousand, I think he said two thousand dollars on me to win. Yeah. And so it was at that he said he'll give me a thousand if right. I win, but bet two. Yeah. So I ended up getting ended up winning. Yeah. And then the there you go. You know, chip with five hundred dollars on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. I was those things, I was like, dang, they really just throw money around out here. But yeah, yeah. it was right. pretty cool to have that that situation, the pressure there. Yeah. But also the confidence and then, you know, just the growing and learning from all yeah. that. And I have to ask, I'm fanboying a little bit. I'm fanboying over you a little bit too, but like AJ yeah. Green, right? You show yeah. up and oh, yeah. AJ Green's there. I mean, like, how was that experience for you? You don't have to get into the details of it, but yeah. just being around an athlete of, of that caliber. Man, it was, yeah. I mean, I remember watching him when I was in high school. He's been yeah. in the league for years. So I've definitely had his jersey, definitely had yeah. him on my team. Yeah. And yeah, that, that shock is, is real. You're yeah. like, like, you know, you're trying to not make eye contact. You're looking right. over, feeling right. it out. But right. um, I, I think the coolest thing is just, you know, getting to know them as a person mm-hmm. and, and seeing what they are beyond the field too, mm-hmm. in that sense. And I think AJ is a fantastic leader in yeah. that sense. Know? Yeah. and he's done so much for Cincinnati so much for the city and just a role model and the way that he holds himself yeah confidence and also just as a person so I think he's a great role model but you know it was just a better person there too that's awesome next question what is the biggest misconception people make about you I don't know I think some people take me as more serious than I am yeah. you know yeah. I think that I'm just a kid living life yeah. having fun you know yeah. then that's the way I'm going to approach most things because mm-hmm. I honestly think that's the best viewpoint or mental mindset for me to be able to excel because I don't want to take anything too seriously. I want to just live, communicate, show love, and just, you know, me. Um, But I I would say that some people see me as more serious than I am. I'm really just about living life and having fun. So how do you, and one of the things I talked about, I answered one of the questions just being three-dimensional, right? Serious, funny, and loving. And that's kind of how, yeah. well, I've tried to do it in, 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 my, in my companies and just kind of how I've tried to live my life. That's how my dad taught us to be. So for okay. you, how, how do you, because, you know, I, I remember you, right? Just like I said, just you were yeah. just locked in, right? And you were focused, yeah. but how do you have that focused mindset and balance it with, with this kind of, you know, happy attitude and, and, and more positive, you know, outlook on life? No, totally. Um, I, one of my coaches told me something that I, I found interesting that sort of aligns with it. Mm. And it was sort of the idea that if you're driving and you're focused on one car, you can't see everything else that's around you. Mm. You will get side hit or whatever. Mm. You know, you can't see anything else in your peripherals. So like 
the idea of being focused, I don't want to be focused, but I just want to take in information, you know? Yeah, that's so I, I think in the idea of like taking it in, appreciating it, appreciating it for what it is, because everyone, everything's got its own unique reasoning behind it. Right. And I think with the appreciation comes some curiosity, creativity, mm-hmm. and that's where my energy comes from in mm-hmm. a sense. I'm not going to like be too giddy with it, but right. I think it's more of a curiosity than mm-hmm. it- Yeah. Great answer. You must be a Stanford graduate. <laughs> Articulate. All right. Next question. <laughs> What type of environment do you want to create slash work in? So I, I guess that, right, this for you would be, you know, what, what kind of team w- would you, what's your ideal team atmosphere, right? Or maybe you're, you're living it right now with, with in Cincinnati, or maybe you had it at Stanford or hard or something like that, but what's the, what's your preferred environment? I would say the, the curiosity, the creativity and the passion there. Mm-hmm. I, I think something with one of those three things mm-hmm. or all of those three things mm-hmm. is an atmosphere that I think can grow and, and change a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that if you don't have passion, it doesn't really create an atmosphere of much gain or much growth. Mm-hmm. Sure. You can have passion. That's got to mm-hmm. be there. Creativity. You just got to think outside the box. You got to be yeah. able to perceive and take in information. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and that think that's the art of it. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's the the part that you can grow, mold and evolve mm-hmm. as our economy, or our right. system, or whatever. Yeah. Everyone evolves. You know, everything's yeah. always changing. That's like yeah. the only kind of change, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think somewhere, you know, having yeah. those three steps in it is a, is a atmosphere that I want to relate with. Yeah. How, how do you, or how have you seen, you know, other people, you show up at Stanford, right? Day one, you have all these great athletes, right? Great athletes and great students. You show up to Cincinnati, you show up to Miami, you have all these great athletes. How do you like, wh- when are you like the leader, right? Or, or, yeah. or like, when do you sit back and learn? And then, and then how do you know when to be a leader? Because at that level, right, you're, are, are you, are you the top dog in certain situations? And then when is it time to learn from a guy like AJ green? Right. So how, right. how have you kind of been able to balance that out? No, that's definitely a feel out thing. You know, you yeah. got to figure it out for yourself. Um, I would say with intention is, is everything. So if you see something mm-hmm. and I had never been, you know, AJ green does a lot of things great. And I'm, I'm not one to go talk out to him there, but like if a buddy of mine, I feel like you got to be on similar like psychological levels in the sense that we all want to grow. We all want to be better. And we all can't see what we ourselves are doing unless we're watching film. So if we're at practice and I see something that I think someone could do better, I've got to speak out on that because I'm moral, you know, duties. Like I got to speak. And the same for him. If, if my teammate sees something that he just don't see is right. Right. Yeah. Speak out on it, whether it be ethics, whether it be, you know, a, a move a physically or, or even an energy. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like it's a, it's a sort of a, I don't want to call it a call out system, but mm-hmm. it's like keeping each other accountable sure. type of thing. Yeah. That level, everyone's, everyone's equal to a sense. Right, you know, everyone's right. out there trying to play ball on the mm-hmm. same. And when you're on the same field, it, it's, it's equal, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's interesting. Next question. What's your opinion on work-life balance? A lot of what I do, a lot of what I eat, a lot, a lot of how I sleep mm-hmm. is for work. But that, yeah. you know, that that is my life. Yeah. You know, that is what I do, and that, that is what I choose to do because mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say it's just an intention. You know, you got to have mm-hmm. intention in everything that you do. You know, yeah. if, if you're – my intention is when I sleep, I got to get my eight hours because I want to perform the next day. Yeah. You know, my intention is when I eat, I want to, you know, if I'm sore, it's that dark fruits. If it's, you know, yeah. if I'm working out, it's that – lean protein mm-hmm. um just figuring out the intention behind every action i love that the intention yeah into that yeah but i would say i mean even on an off day you know that that would be the life portion you're talking about i would go golf or go fishing because yeah, fishing i see it all the time i, I follow you on instagram the fishing yeah love it but for me that's Where, contrast where's the like, spot where's the spot in cincinnati Oh, no, I can't be talking about that. Okay, you're right, right, yeah. yeah okay. I got a couple of spots. I got yeah. some family friends okay. actually locally out here who I've okay. been, you know, going up to there. They have like yeah. a little on, you know. Okay. I got yeah. up there. Yeah. I've actually fished the Ohio River, but that's, that's oh, wow. a big yeah. river. So it's been, eh. yeah. And I think that's part of the fun of it, too, is finding the spots. Sure, that's cool. Uh, define success. Oof. I would say is all interior, all on yourself. You know, I don't think it has to do with anyone's outside opinion, but success is, is, is literally just sort of your goal on paper of what you want to be. 
and do and achieving what you want. You know, and I think that you are privileged every day to have the ability to do that. You know, you have the choice to try to do those steps that you think is necessary to achieve that. And I think that, you know, it's, it's got to be between you and yourself. Uh, it's just, that's between the ears. That's your own game, you know? And I think success is just, is being the best you there, regard, not for other people, not, you know, for any coach, any situation, but for you in there. Awesome. How do you want people to think of you slash remember you? I'd say it's just more of like more of a goofball who brings energy to a situation who isn't going to be outworked. You know, I, I, I love I'm that work. It'll yeah. be a goofball and I'm bringing that energy for whatever community that I'm involved in, you know? Yeah. Love that. What is a motto that is important to you? A motto. Um, let's see. I would say nothing. What's the motto with you? But that's my <laughs> Uh, uh, i had to let it out it's all good uh, what's a motto that sticks with me that's important you know i do like my quotes um let's see if i got something up the sleeve uh i would it's not a quote really but i'll just go with one that i it's not really a quote i don't even know if it's a motto but it's, it's something that i enjoy in the sense is like an oxymoron and the idea of two things existing together that don't oftentimes or don't normally exist together and that's like in the sense for me it's in sprinting but it's also in your day-to-day -day life you know with my football and fishing those things you know a lot of times contrast mentally physically but they exist together in their own way if they're sort of molded i think the best example is running though the ability to contract and relax in such a rapid manner um, but I think in life, I like to look at those oxymorons that just sort of exist in our day-to-day -day life and how we're able to flow and change throughout it to adapt to our given situation there. Question I wanted to ask, uh, I, I, I have the blessing of having some other athletes on, I hope to further yeah. down the line too, but a question I wanted to ask them was, I remember right when I was in high school, I would say, oh man, I'm exhausted after practice or whatever. I, you're, you're, you're physically exhausted. And now I work, I'm like, oh, I'm mentally exhausted. I've never really been like uh, on the level that, that you're at, right? To where, what, in your opinion, is it more exhausting to be physically exhausted or mentally exhausted? Oh, more exhausting to be physically or mentally. Like, I, I, as a Stanford student, right? You're going, you're going to school and, and you know that, that you know, school's tough and then you're going to practice. Which one for you at, at, the, at the highest level Right, Stanford, one of the greatest universities in our country. Yeah. For you, what was it was it tougher being mentally exhausted or physically exhausted? I think it was the mental. You yeah. know, I think physically I can get behind the feeling of soreness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with that, I also have an appreciation for growth. You know, mm -hmm. it's sort of a, a reminder that I'm growing, that I'm yeah. getting better. So mm -hmm. I, I sort of take soreness in that manner. Mm -hmm. Um, but with mental, it's like a lot of times for me, the mental is, is more of a stress, more of a situation that a lot of times I think it's it, like, that's why I say it's between the ears. It's, yeah. it's sort of self-deemed. It's, it's given mm -hmm. to yourself, whether in camp, it's the ultimate time where it's the most pressure because you're like, hey, you know, like my first year, you start counting. Yeah, okay, we got 11 receivers and seven of them are getting kept. So four of them are getting cut. And now you're two weeks off from cut date. You're like, trying to make plays to not get cut in the situation mm -hmm. and so that's where the mental comes mm -hmm. into it and mm -hmm. you got to take it day to day and you got to take it hour to hour minute to minute and just handle the things that you can handle and, mm -hmm. and understand that what will happen will happen and then yeah. that is always under your control yeah. and you can't do it that's why i also say don't do it for someone else do it for you yeah. can't do it for a coach because they feel that too yeah. you know no one is someone who's going to do something strictly for them they want the outcome, you know, they want you to make a play so that the team does better so that they keep their job. So their family stays in that city because yeah. they have their own situation. Yeah. Kind of yeah. It's not really, you know, it's not a kiss ass situation. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, you got to do the job, find a way to do it and mm -hmm. take it day to day, minute yeah. to minute. I'm sorry. I keep asking follow up questions. I'm entrenched in what you're saying. So I'm yeah. learning. This is what it's all about. I'm learning from you. So when you know, you're a nice guy, right? You're a great teammate, as I explained earlier. How difficult is it, and how do you do it when you're competing with those eleven guys, right? And four of yeah. them, four of them aren't going to be there. How do you maintain your your positive, funny, 
quirky yeah. attitude, right? Of being being a best, a, a great teammate, but then yeah. you you want to be the seven guys, right? So how, hey, how, how how do you offset that? Man, that, that's a battle every day. Yeah. You know, that's where I, that comparison is a thief of joy. That's where I, I live on that one there. Yeah. And it's like if you're sitting there comparing yourself to, you know, let's just call him Joe, mm -hmm. you're not able to compete and be yourself you're not able to you know you're, you're thinking outside too much and you're not able to flow and take in information mm -hmm. within the moment and make the plays that are you know um there for you to be made that is the ultimate battle especially in camp you know you want you can't control anyone else doing good or bad right. so those ideas those thoughts are just wasted you know mm -hmm. you don't want to waste your own thoughts and your ideas in a situation where you need to take in all the information that's given to you on the field in front of you. So it's a battle and I, I battle with it every day. So yeah. I'm not here to say that right. none of it's solved. It's, it's a battle. Is your, is your roommate a, another receiver? Are you roomed with someone that during camp right now? So right now, cause of COVID, I got my own room. There you go. I, there you I, go. Yeah. You know, they're like, ah, oh, we got to keep them apart. COVID was weird. We got yeah. tracked too. So they keep us six really? feet apart. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You're advocating for the NFL protocols. There you go. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Goodell's doing good. Cool. Uh, this is actually the last question. I have a little follow-up question. So what was your dream job growing up? Which I think you're dream? doing it. <laughs> you know, I, it was always a dream for yeah. sure. It was what, you know, I wanted to do what my dad wanted yeah. to do. It was sort of that, that goal that was out there, but it never seemed tangible until it, it was right in front of me. So but, I, I but when, say, when was that? When was it? When, yeah. what was the moment when you were like, like I could do it right. Because, because it's funny, Trent, because I talk in the first episode about, um, you know, me, right. Of course my yeah. dream was to be an NFL player, right. Sophomore year hits. Oh, I'm not on varsity. I'm not yeah. this fast. I'm not this strong. I'm not this big. Uh -huh. I'm not going yeah. to the NFL, right? Like, 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 let's start. I'm going to play in high school, enjoy myself, be around great yeah. people, try to learn from great people like yourself. And then, you know, like I, I kind of started formulating like a little business plan, right? Like yeah. early, early on in high school, that was my edge. Right. But for yeah. you, when was it where you were like, man, I, I could do this thing, <laughs> man, you know, I, I got to college and it was, that's sort of where you're looking around. You're like comparing, which mm -hmm. like I said, probably not the greatest thing, but mm -hmm. You try to figure out where you fit in, where you do that. And I probably really didn't know until I was at Miami, you know, in the sense. It was like, I didn't even know how long, you know, you're sitting yeah. there, you're a rookie, you're like, these guys are pro bowlers. Like, what's the difference between pro bowlers and, and college? You're like, you don't know until you're there. And all those experiences that you take. And I said, I wouldn't really know until I was there. And um, it took me getting a little healthier, too, with my MCL but also mentally getting more um, just locked into what type of things I needed to focus on and what type of things I could dismiss. And I think with my, uh, I got a couple week break between um, Miami and Cincy and I was able to um, find a coach that I loved in California who I've always gone back to. And he's been a speed guy and just a mental coach in that sense. And um, that's been great for me. And ever since Cincinnati, I knew I belong. I knew I could, I could make the plays that I need to make. And um, that was pretty much the moment where I, I knew I could play at this level yeah. with given the opportunities and just excited to, you know, and blessed to be able to continue to play here. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. Again, like I said, before we, we went on, just a huge fan of yours and just, I, I expect greatness, right? Like when I, when I, when I hear you catching a, a pass last year for five yards, I was like, five touchdowns like that's what i think I, 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 like, like that's the trend that i want like, that's the trend that i know and, and i know you're capable so uh just a huge huge fan of yours so last question this is the bonus question uh no. when you when you hear perfect strangers what's the first thing you think of see perfect strangers i feel like there's like a an idea i don't know i, I don't know how y'all take it but this is sort of where i'm in it it's sort of the idea that like i feel like you know each other mm -hmm but you don't really know the inner details of the people, sure. you know, you, you know each other on a more surface level. Sure. And so you're sort of, you know, your friends, your acquaintances or whatever, mm -hmm. but the stranger aspect is the know the like clarification that you don't know the deeper level of them. So mm -hmm. it's the, it's the dive into that aspect that you can really get to know someone from a more mental, more inner holistic perspective that just opens up the door for, where they go about life.
That's it. I mean, you know, I think, again, a lot of people are going to say that the movie Stranger Things, right? Some nonsense yeah. like that. But uh, I, I, I kind of had a similar meaning to it, right? And, and I think for me, I'm going to try to define that meeting as, as we go through it and listen to my awesome yeah. guests kind of explain it. But um, I, that that was kind of similar to how I was thinking on on similar. Even my dad, for example, right? When, when I have him come on, on here uh, at yeah. one point, he told me that he will not come on until I get to episode 25, though. So he was supposed to be next week. He said, nope, he, I need to prove myself to him. So, so episode okay. 25 is when he'll come on. But yeah. anyway, uh, like, like when I have him on, these aren't questions I would necessarily ask him, right? Like, of course, right. my dad's taught me everything I know and on a respect level and all that kind of good stuff. But I th- yeah. feel like these questions are, are a little bit more, uh, you know, deeper meaning, of course. So that to oh. me is why, you know, the, the whole name came up. And also, I do love Little Wayne, and it's a song by him. So our little theme song is Little Little Wayne song there. So okay. uh, what, what kind of music do you like? Country? I think you're a country guy, right? I always say rap, country, and Shakira. I've been- Shakira. There you <laughs> oh, go. <laughs> Shakira. I love that. Shakira, I love man. that. So, and real quick, uh, the, the acting. How did you get into the acting? Man, so my dad always did acting. He did okay. commercials growing up. He was okay. from Michigan, went to L.A. to act. Yeah, and so, like as a family, we just all did commercials, yeah. and so that's how we got into it. And yeah. it was sort of a way to contribute to the fam mm-hmm. too, in the sense of like part of the money for the house right now was my investment too to help out the family and and you know in those yeah. type of situations. So yeah. it was a unique situation, but it was also cool because like you know as a kid, like you know you make quite a bit of money from acting. Yeah, but I had like ten, fifteen thousand to make. Right, <laughs> right. right. balling. Yeah. And do nothing with it, but right. you know, right. come yeah. up with that conversation. Oh, I have six hundred dollars. I'd be like, yeah, I yeah. got ten. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. That's great. That's oh. great. Well, man, those are my questions. Again, Trent, like, thank you so much, man, for giving me the opportunity. The podcast is not a whole lot right now. I'm, I'm, I, yeah. I, I plan to make it something a lot, a lot bigger one day. But again, my my big goal is to make it a learning experience for me. And I, I'm yeah. looking at Jordan over here. I'm taking my notes. Right, a, a great, Love great that. answers on your questions. So. Uh, I'm good. Again, this is Trent Irwin, Stanford graduate, Cincinnati Bengal, all time legend, like uh, just a, a role model for me. So uh, thank you so much, man, for, for coming on on the podcast. It's going to air on Thursday. So we'll do okay. so, some marketing over the next couple of days to our, our, oh. our, our couple followers, uh, some, some family members for sure. But we'll make sure to tag you in all of it. Again, this is the Perfect Strangers podcast, episode three. Trent Irwin, he's the man. Best of luck to you this season. Best of luck to you during camp. We're watching. We're, we're rooting for you. Uh, and I expect nothing but great things from you, man. So thank you Pleasure. very much. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, Trent. Thank you, man.